And yeah. All right. So we've started. And no, it doesn't matter. I'd actually, I'd like uh, more medics because we're going to, there's going to be some dying going on. So just as many medics as possible. All kits should be available. So anyone can switch to medic regardless of whatever. There we go. Excellent. All right. Let me just make sure I have full health. I do. Could you, Clayton, could you shoot me once in the foot, please? In the, there you go. There you go. You got it. All right, here comes Lamageddon as well. Okay, Lamageddon, just to update you, I've been shot once in the foot. I haven't bandaged yet. All right, so let's start talking about sort of the, the main uh, lesson here. All right, or a, a part of the main lesson, I guess. First, I'm going to talk about movement under fire. So if, you, if you're taking fire, what do you think? Like, what's the best idea? How do you move? Do you move in straight lines? I know this seems like a very yeah. obvious and leading question. No, serpentine, Sick obviously, out. right. How many of you do it actively? I bet very few, because I kill a I lot of people lot. just because of that, right? So you have to... Pass in a straight line to cover. Well, maybe I would say, like, even if you're crossing, even if you're crossing from this truck to this door, you know, I'd still just go zigzag. The extra seconds usually save your lives. It's yeah, super duper easy. A good distance, like just. Uh, I don't know. Uh, hang on, watch me, and this use this works for me. All right, I just go like this, and then I also like I go a little bit sideways here and there. I use the the keys as well as the mouse, you know. Now, obviously, that was a bit staccato because I'm talking at the same time, and I only have so many fingers. But you get the point. Straight things bad if you want to keep eyes on the enemy. Yeah, I mean. Strafing, I, I do a little bit of strafing, a little bit of, of zigzag in the move or in the vision, and then I throw in a little bit of a dolphin dive here and there, which uh, also seems to do the trick. And uh, yeah, well, generally, you survive a lot longer doing that. The more, what I also see is the more you move, the faster you bleed. That could be the case. I have not heard of any such thing, uh, but that could be the case. It would be clever of them but i like yeah, i think you would have read it feature. yeah i i don't know if it's a feature uh, to be honest i've never heard of it before uh, let's see i'm going to bleed out soon but uh just hang in there i'm gonna scroll on a, a little uh, document here right okay so this is uh basic infantry training and that means it's is for a basic kit, right? This isn't medic specific, or it's not uh, LAT specific. This is more. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna bleed out shortly. Oh yeah, you you can see the thing, right? So how long was that? Let's check the recording. That was three minutes. Three minutes. You can survive being shot in the You've foot. Got you? Yes, I do. Oh, right. Say I got the shot then. Is that quicker? Yeah, I'm not uh, quite sure. I think it's slightly quicker, but you'd still have two minutes, you know? You'd still have a good long time before you bleed out. And the lesson here is basically you do see a lot of, uh, a lot of people getting shot, and then it's prone, bandage out, and they, st and they start bandaging, and then you just leisurely walk over and shoot them in the face, right? It's the dumbest fucking thing to do. Ever and obviously, you can hear the enemy bandage. They can hear you bandage. So it's just keep in mind that you can survive an awfully long time without bandaging. And sometimes you shouldn't bandage at all. If you are completely in the shit and you know that as soon as you take out your bandage and they hear that sound, they're gonna rush you. Then you're better off just sitting with your gun out, right? If you're gonna die, you're gonna die anyway. You know, so you might as well be ready to shoot for as long as possible. So just. Try and keep it in mind. It is a very, very good lesson. Another quick, like while we're talking about bandaging, uh, Llama, just shoot me in the foot again. Jesus Christ. You guys are eternally, eternally disappointing. All right, I'm going to move over here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so. Well, you're more than halfway down now. There. Like, if you do this... And you get your gun back out. That's called bandage baiting. Not everyone, like it's very obvious now that I show it to you. Not everyone knows about it, right? So this is a good way to get kills. If you know, like, I just had a, some sort of combat skirmish with a guy right into uh, this area. 
I didn't kill him, but I might have hit him. I don't, I'm not sure, but he definitely hit me. So I switch, I bandage, and I stop. And then I just wait for him. Mm, and then he comes rushing out, and then I just shoot him in the face, right? Uh, the alternative here is... That's why that always happened to me. Yeah, and there is a lot of people who know about this trick, so it might not work, or they might be listening for the second sound, which would be something like you have the rip, and then the second rip, you know? He might be listening for that. It's just slightly different sounds. Yeah, it's slightly different sounds. Perfect. Exactly, exactly. And he might be listening for that before he rushes out, shit like that. So, or he just might throw a grenade at you. You never know, but it, it's a handy trick to keep in mind. And about, um, yeah. If you're under very heavy fire and your medic's really busy, uh, pulling out your own bandages and patching up your teammates so the medic doesn't run out. Absolutely a good idea. But when you're under very heavy fire, like this is super situational, which is, and I'm going to mention it later, but it's, I might as well do it now. It's super duper situational because like if you're under very heavy fire, sometimes it's good to shoot back and then maybe they won't shoot so much at you. You know, they might duck their heads down. But other times, you know, you might as well not poke your head up because they're super duper accurate. They'll shoot it off as soon as you uh, stick it up there. So it's like yes and no, you know, sometimes uh, or when you have the chance, especially when there are no enemies nearby, use your bandages to to bandage your friendlies. Because like one of your bandages is, or one of the medics bandages is worth like three of yours. You know, you cannot help the medics enough. Uh, but... And hold grenades, man. Who's, uh, wait, who's this guy, by the way? Is he, are you in the channel? No. No. All right. Not in. Don't know who yeah, are. sorry. Uh, this is a, this is a sort of a semi-private uh, training session. Uh, sorry about that. Shoot me in the head, shoot me in the head. Oh, he's tight. We had a target, aim. I totally didn't deserve that. If we all shoot, we don't know who got the kill shot. Ah. Uh, my, uh, my console buttons uh, just kicked this guy. Get John, Mitch, get rid there of him. There you go, thank you. Oh. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I just, uh, like, I'm trying to find my console button, but I've, uh, I've cleared the cache since I assigned it, so it's like... I'm gonna put a password on. Yeah. All right, so to continue, yeah, I had to clear my cash. Go, uh, let's going see. along with going along with your with regards to your bleeding out and your health. Does everybody understand that you have basically 100 health points in in the game engine itself, and that each time that you get shot, you can take approximately uh, three hits before you go down, like one to the head, but three to the body. Now there is a damage table which you can actually look at which will show you the minimum to the average damage that you can get from each of your weapons. So having a, an idea of how much damage that you actually do can make a difference. Uh, you got a, a link for that? Yeah, I, I think London, if you could link that in the training channel, it's in, uh, it's in the Discord. Just, just link it there uh, after when we're done or something. That's uh, really, really good advice actually. Yeah, I have an exam tomorrow. Wish I could be a part of that. It is perfectly fine. We will do loads of these over uh, time. I'm just going to do this one probably multiple times just to try and get as many people as possible. Uh, but Steve. let's continue. Let's ask a question quick on uh, gun damage then. Does, a, say, an AR rifle do more damage than the regular M M4 where we got? Thing. Well, an AK-74 does base damage 60, but a minimum 35 to the chest. Yeah, 60 to an M4 does 62 and 35. So there is a right the range difference and things are taken into account. So you feel free to have a look at it. It's, it's on the web. Yeah, there's a drop off at range and there's all sorts of shit. Can I get the password to the server? Get the password. Hey, Matching. But if he's right. a if he's a cadet, he won't see it, will he? He's not a cadet, is he? No, he's a All right, right, right. Let's continue. Let's continue. There's a lot of chatter going on. All right. So, uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to the term the 360. 
If it's not obviously apparent to, to you what that means, it's basically not exactly what Ark is doing there. Uh, it is, instead of us looking into this circle, we're all going to look outside the circle. Now, we as a group are keeping the 360. We're looking in every direction, right? So when I say, as a squad leader, I say, all right, let's remember the 360. That means you should open your map and look at where all your squad mates are looking. And if you see a direction that isn't covered by them, you're going to cover that direction, right? Basically, it is to prevent uh, to prevent us getting flanked or ambushed by someone we just by don't see. How can I sign up for the... Um, you know, Gene, I do this. CCFN? Like, you know I yeah, just come. Just ask uh, after the training, okay? Like yeah, give me a second. No All right. Hang on, hang on. Two seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say again. I call it a 360 no scope. I go into a room. Okay, uh, gents are spread out. 360 no scope vision. Don't want anyone to catch us. That's right, that. right. This is just uh, uh, nomenclature in that sense, like what you call it. Generally, it's referred to as the 360, or that's what I've heard it referred to as, uh, where you just you keep the 360 means just keep your eyes 360 degrees, and uh, and everyone sort of uh, knows what that means as far as. I, I like the term. I, yes. I find 360 no scope quite confusing because that makes me think of Quake, where you might do that. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I mean, it's it's a funny. 360 no scope in terms of not looking down the scope, but keeping your eyes open. Yeah, right, right, right. I'm sure, I don't explain that. And it's it's uh, I mean, it's a more fun terminology, I guess. Uh, the point is that everyone knows what the term means, so that when they hear it, right, it's more of an introduction into the terminology, and. Uh, as a as a normal soldier, you should be doing this pretty much all the time, unless you're like unless it's a rush or you're in a vehicle and you can't. Obviously, uh, you should totally be like checking your map, see if someone's uh, not looking in a direction, and you, there might be enemies there you don't know, and just check it out. Like uh, when I'm attacking, when I'm a squad leader, my favorite thing to do is attack where the enemy don't think I'm going to attack from, right? And if you're not keeping the 360, like you should be then that's going to be super successful for me, right? So, so keep it the 360 is really important when you are, uh, yeah, when you are just standard infantry, right? Sometimes medics, they have specific tasks. Sometimes LATs are following a vehicle. They can't do that. But standard infantry always do this, right? And right. So the next one is... These are in no particular order. I should have ordered these before starting the lesson, but uh, I'm going to skip a few. Just give me five seconds to figure out which where to do next. Mm. Yeah, map awareness. Map awareness is a good next one. So we were talking about the map and checking the map to where everyone else is looking. And a, a uh, another good thing to do is basically, like I check the map... On average, between every 5 to 10 seconds, probably closer to 5 and 10, right? And that's not only when squad, when squad leading, I do it more often, I'd say. But when I'm a normal soldier, I do it super duper often. And it is to get a general feel for, uh, hmm, how do I say this? A general feel for the map, right? You see markers dropped here and there. Yeah, how, how, the, how combat is going and just... Like a lot of a lot of squad leaders, they'll drop a marker and then just forget about it. It'll be there for quite a while, right? So a lot of markers are old, but you still get a general sense of okay, the enemy's coming generally from the southwest region across this river here. There's a lot of them there. You know, you sort of you get to learn by looking at the map so many times uh, over so many hours. You get to sort of feel the combat a, a little more. You get a sense of how it's going, where the pushes are coming, and where you would expect the enemy to attack next, right? If they were coming from the south now, and then that hasn't been going well for them, well, maybe I should start looking west, because we know it hasn't been going well, because squad two, well, they're alive, and they're still fighting down there. I can see them moving around on the map. They're, they're looking side to side and shit. And you just, by looking at the map often and analyzing it, uh, you will get really fast at analyzing the map, number one. And number two, you will be more successful in predicting where the enemy will be and where they are now, which is very, very practical thing. So just get used to looking at the map super often. It'll also reduce uh, your team kills. Not only that, but as a medic, 
We also can you advise where the friendlies are dropping if you look always on the map. Yeah, exactly. If we're pushing, if we're pushing north and you see that our friendly squad is totally getting wiped out, then you know you have to communicate with your squad lead. Mm. But you might have moved another way. Yeah, this is this is what I'd call the secondary uh, the secondary assignment for a medic is to update the squad leader where specifically heavy casualties or um, yeah, if there's heavy casualties, I would tell the squad lead. And also if, for example, squad two, who is to our north, uh, has one casualty, right? If they have one casualty, but we've only ever spotted contacts to the south, then we know there's contacts to the north. That's relevant information for the squad leader to have. So it's, it's stuff like that. Just little nuanced stuff, but obviously don't spam comms with that kind of shit. Uh, uh, don't, like, we want to we wanna be able to play the game and also hear footsteps, but also communicate, you know? And I, I notice a lot, especially now with all the new players coming in, you will see, like, it's literally impossible to really hear footsteps when you're a part of a, a public squad, for example. Just because there's constant communication... And a lot of the information will feel super relevant to you, but it's it's not always you have to go out and, you know, a lot of this stuff can be said in local. Some of it can be said in the squad channel. Some of it you can even type, right? Some of it's like, I think there might be a fob, blah, blah, blah. You can type it out to your own uh, squad by pressing L, you know? So it's uh, it's stuff like that. Like if it's not time sensitive and if you have time to type, then type it, you know, it's it's much, much better. And I'm have to look at text. Yep. Go. Can can I comment on the direction in maps? Absolutely. Quick. Um, usually when uh, a team opens a crossfire, uh, so all of the team or the squad, whatever, um, they shoot on one direction, yeah, and the enemy shoot on your back. Uh, so it opens like a frontier. Usually, like all the team. Usually go to that direction, always looking on that direction, mm. specific direction, mm. and usually it gives, it gives um, it gives some kind of um, adva advantage point where you can like uh, flank. And Absolutely. At that moment, you, yeah, at that moment really then don't look left or right; you just look straight forward. Exactly, exactly. This, sniper, I take there is also, yeah, there is a term for this. It's called tunnel visioning. And it's what you want the other squads to do or the, the enemies to do, right? That you want them to tunnel vision. You want to uh, make it appear as though they have something super duper important to do that all of them need to do so that you can either slip out and flank or someone else can flank, right? That's why, for example, if two squads are attacking the same flag, one squad should attack south, the other west or east. Or, or like ideally, one squad south, one north, one east, one west, you know, like opposite sides. That's the ideal but that's not always possible. So you should at the very least have sort of uh, southeast and then southwest, you know? You shouldn't be you shouldn't be attacking the same route. That's just wasting it's wasting their attention, right? They're all going to be looking southeast then if all of you are coming southeast. If some of you like they have to divide and it, you're giving them an opportunity to make a mistake. You're giving them the opportunity to have uh, five guys over here southeast and only three guys over southwest and then southwest will crumble and southeast will go next you know it's stuff like that you need to give the enemy plenty of opportunity to make mistakes and uh, yeah, the yeah the thing you can take advantage of it like if you take one squad just one squad even a half a squad and you you take a lot of uh, aggro as you can say uh, it's enough take like uh, maybe half a team or at least two squads mm. and you can easily flank with the other team yeah exactly it's diversion tactics i also love to what i would do is like i hardly ever use smoke grenades to attack with what i do is i throw let's see let's say we're attacking up here somewhere right where i'm looking right now we're attacking up here somewhere so i throw a smoke grenade right here and i throw a smoke grenade right here because they've already spotted us, so I throw some smoke grenades, they keep looking here, and while they're doing that, I'm flanking up this way, right? So I don't attack where I threw the smokes. The smokes are there just to give them something to look at. Just to distract them, Decoy. basically. Exactly. Right? And I do that with vehicles as well. Uh, like, if I'm being pinned by a vehicle, I'm behind here, then I throw the smoke grenade way over there somewhere. Because that's where the vehicle is going to be looking, and then I run the other way. 
and occasionally it works sometimes it doesn't but it gives you a better chance than not doing anything you know uh, let's see right so yeah this is also a super duper important lesson and it is actually let's move away from the fucking smoke grenades because they're distracting that's why you throw them there yeah exactly uh guys by the way just hold gl fire hold everything um uh, yeah all right so uh it's it's no problem it's no problem uh so uh next thing is uh, recognizing the enemy now 99 percent of team kills is because some idiot doesn't know what like he doesn't see the difference between the u.s side and the insurgents right and generally like you should be able to do that and like uh, seeing the difference between the russian desert camo and the u.s desert camo sometimes is practical so i would right now i would try and familiar or not right now but as soon as possible familiarize yourself with the different uniforms i know uh, U.S. side have the desert camo, and they used to have, well, maybe for a short while they had forest camo. And the Russians have desert and forest. And uh, you have militia, and then you have insurgents as well. And uh, I hear U.K. side will be coming soon-ish. So you've got a lot of uniforms to uh, sort of familiarize yourself with. And I, I uh, recommend you do that as soon as freaking possible. Just because it'll help you so much in the game. It'll reduce the amount of team kills you do. And a lot of stuff like that. Another thing is like... And this is just about settings really. I personally... Uh, I know a lot of people just like... I've got a, a super, super computer. So I've just everything to Epic. I would not recommend you do that. 99% uh, of people playing... Or not 99, but at least 90% of people playing. They have foliage set to low. Reason being, uh, basically, the higher your foliage settings, the higher the, the straws of grass are. That's it. So you're basically helping the enemy conceal themselves. Which is, if you're a new player, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do you any good. Like, start with low, and then you can move up from there. Uh, I, I was playing with everything set to max, because I was one of these idiots with the good computer. And my game improved drastically once I set foliage to low. Shadows and everything else doesn't really matter, but foliage to low is really, really good. I also, just quickly gonna mention, uh, I also, I do got shadows. yeah, I have anti-aliasing set to TXAA. Now, the other one, foliage, what, what, what foliage is? Foliage, foliage grass and bushes is commonly referred to as foliage. Uh, because it is, it is, yeah, it's literally foliage. Foliage is vegetation, basically. So you have on low? Low, exactly, yes, because... But would we get away with that in a map? Yes, yes, low, yes, low, yes, low is the minimum required setting for tournament settings. Oh, nice. Mumblerines plays with foliage on low. Yeah, change the to see what happens. Yeah. I thought you had everything on medium. No, 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 no. Foliage low, shadows high, view distance epic. That is tournament settings. Yeah, but play it like we're on a desert map. This isn't this isn't exactly the rainforest. So you will notice you will notice uh, another yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah, shadows high is that's tournament settings. Shadows high is tournament settings. Yes, I believe, I believe it's high. You, you were about to mention anti-aliasing. Yes, anti-aliasing. Like, I, yeah, possible. right. So this is a personal preference kind of thing. Now, uh, if you look, like, let's say you don't have the best computer. Well, then off is, is might be a good idea. But if you uh, basically, if you have, if you use the T plus FX, F A A thing, T plus FX A A. Yeah, for me, that gives me a very, very... Uh, what I call a very act, uh, yeah, it's act a very active image where there's pixels switching from one, to like they're they're sort of blinking, kind of, right? Even if you're just standing still, you're looking at a bush, it's sort of blinking. 
I don't like that. I want a, a static an image as possible because what we're looking for when we're looking for enemy soldiers is movement. When your image is constantly moving, that's going to be very, very hard to spot. So what you want is a very static image. And I find that the TXAA gives you the most static image of the anti-aliasing settings. If you switch around a little bit, you will uh, find the same, I believe. I also use vertical sync just because it also improves the static image, but it is it requires a lot out of your computer. So I don't I don't recommend it if you don't sort of have the, the, the TXAA power. Is kind of blurry though. The TXAA is kind of blurry, yes, but we have something that fixes that for us because there is a program. It is called Reshade. I recommend it to literally everyone. It uh, it steals about two to three FPS, and it ma it sharpens everything up instantly. Uh, it is also what everyone uses. Every single mumblerine has this program on. It is generally recognized as not cheating because it it all it does is makes the game prettier. But it also assists you in seeing uh, people. I'm going to link to it in the training channel. Thank you. Yep. Uh, after the match. And if you're not playing with it now, you absolutely have to be. Because it really it makes the game look a lot nicer, number one. It also makes it slightly easier to spot enemies because it removes a lot of this blurriness that you're talking about. It removes like 100% of it, totally. All right, that's, that's more technical. Uh, let's, um, hmm, let's talk about rules of engagement and then one more, uh, thing. And then I think we're going to wrap it up because too much information, you'll just forget half of it. Uh, so yeah, rules of engagement, ROE is generally people say, or, or the, the nomenclature I'm used to is, uh, with, uh, like the squad leader would say ROE red and ROE is just short for rules of engagement. Rules of engagement generally means are you allowed to shoot? Are you not allowed to shoot? Or how are you allowed to shoot? So ROE red would mean you're not allowed to shoot, right? So if you see an enemy and he doesn't see you, you are not to fire on that enemy. So currently we are flanking, we are being sneaky, ROE is red, and we're trying to stay hidden. So if you shoot at literally everything you see then, that's going to be very, very difficult to do. However, if ROE is green, that means shoot at anything you see. We're already, like, we're not trying to hide, right? And this is important obvi for obvious reasons, right? If you're trying to hide, you're trying to hide. And uh, sometimes you might want to also not fire, like, even if ROE is green, you might not want to fire at everything you see just because, uh, like, you can't always get the kill, right? Uh, sometimes the guy manages to hide first. So if he doesn't see you, but you see him and you got a buddy next to you, maybe you should go, hey, hey, uh, 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 let's see, Steven No Scope 420. Uh, see that guy over there? Yeah, yeah, I totally see him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's fire at him together. Three, two, one, boom. And you're going to get him like twice as much, uh, which is a good thing to do, right? Keep that in mind. And especially if you see a full squad, don't just open fires. Like, if they don't see you, get your squad. Get a firing line. Kill them all, you know? Don't just get that one stupid asshole in the back. You want to kill them all. Much, much more uh, helpful. So just keep that in mind. Like, play this game as much with your brain as with your, with your uh, sort of instincts, your, your aim, and your, your jerk reactions, you know? Thinking is very, very good. And, um, all right, so I'm going to do one more and then we're just going to do a quick recap and then we're going to call this quits. I believe I'm on overtime already. So, uh, the next one is, uh, and I totally actually, yeah, I totally hate when people do this. It is super duper bad. You should never, never do this. So right now, uh, let's see, I'm going to pick llama. All right. Where's the enemy? Tell me where the enemy is. Where's the enemy? I'm the enemy. Where's the enemy? I don't know. Where's the enemy? Right in front. Oh, he's right in front of you. Oh yeah, there you go. You you told me I was right in front of me, right? So you're communicating with your pals, and you say right in front of me. They don't give a shit where you are. They don't know where you are. They're not paying attention to you at all, right? You're your own soldier. So never use yourself as a reference point. Never, ever, ever, ever. If you do that, not only are you not saying anything useful, but you're cluttering up comms. The only time, and this is the only time you're going to do enemy on me, 
is when you do it over local. Over local, you are allowed to do this because, number one, I can hear where you're talking from. So it's actually useful information. But if you do it in squad comms, man, it is just, it's just preventing me from hearing that crucial footstep I need to not get shot in the back, right? That's all it is to me. It's just noise. So uh, always use a static reference point. Static reference points are as follows. Your squad leader, your rally point, your FOB, a flag enemy or friendly, right? That's basically it. You could use a river as a reference point, but it is less accurate. If you can, say, contact north roughly 50 meters, right? Just ballpark it completely. If it's 50 or 100, they're still going to react the same way, right? So just ballpark it. 400 meters means... That's one that really annoys me. Yeah, people don't give a range as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, also, I would say, let's say, the ideal callout for me would be, uh, let's see, so I'm calling out for Tim, right? Contact spotted, 30, uh, 75 degrees east, right? So I go 75 degrees and then I go east. I could have gone northeast, doesn't really matter. It's just to give people like a rough bearing because not everyone has that compass in their brains. So I go 75 degrees east, 50 meters. Now, and 50 meters, that's accurate enough for Tim right here. Or I could just say close. Which would, which would indicate, like, very, very close. And, uh, so, yeah, that's it. So, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that to uh, wrap this up. We're going to do this again and again. I'll, I'll probably go through the same subjects over and over again multiple times. I've still got uh, at least 10 or 12 subjects on my list that I haven't gone through today, but I don't want the lesson to be too long. So... Yeah, just, just in comment, we also got... Uh, a, uh, a shortcut for that radius rtd radius distance target yeah 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 rtd that's actually a good military yeah that's not a bad thing to do but however however you want to say that is fine with me just mention like you don't have to mention all three things like you don't even have to mention like the fucking number you could go uh, even if he's 75 degrees and you say northeast that's perfectly fine by me you could say contact northeast 50 meters I'm happy with that, as long as he's actually northeast. If he's south and you say northeast, I'm going to be slightly pissed, but you get the point. Yeah, you get the boot. Yeah, well, not that bad, but I might not trust your <laughs> indications anymore. I might treat them as noise. So, uh, what did we go through today, right? We went through, yeah, thank you. We went through how long you can wait. Yeah, how long, yeah, and, and kudos for fucking hitting this time. One shot. So, yeah. So we went through how long you can survive without bandaging. And uh, the bandage, yeah, the bandage baiting. Now, three minutes is if you're shot in the foot. But you can survive literally minutes, right? You don't have to rush it. You don't have seconds, right? Yeah. You've got more time than that. And you can gauge it very, very well. I'm, I'm getting super good at it where I can gauge if I'm just fucked or not. Right? So you can gauge it by how red your screen is, how uh, little other sound you hear than your fucking heartbeat. You know, that increases as you get closer to dying. And we also went over the whole bandage baiting, right? Bandage baiting, also super duper nice. And then there's the 360, which is also very, very practical. And there's the zigzag, which you should... And sometimes I zigzag... I'm not even taking shots, I zigzag. Just because I might take shots here and that'd be super duper bad. Right, you don't want to be an easy target. Uh, and uh, we went through rules of engagement, when to shoot, when to not shoot. And sometimes it's pertinent to ask your squad leader, can I fire? And he'll respond if he's a good squad leader. Uh, recognizing the enemy is something everyone should do. We're also going to post the sort of the, the damage. The, I'm assuming it's going to be a picture. We're going to post that in the training uh, discord. We're actually, we're going to post it in the public as well. Yeah, we're going to post it in the public as well because some of you don't have access to the training Discord. We're also going to post... Uh, what was the second thing? Oh, yeah, it's Reshade. Re Reshade, yeah. So we're going to post a link to Reshade as well. We'll do it in the lobby and we'll do it in the training uh, Discord. We'll pin it in the training Discord. In the lobby, it's just going to vanish, so so keep your eyes open, okay? And uh, thank you very much for joining, all right? Thank you.